All right, we are back here. All right, we're back and going. Yeah, my my power cut out for, or my internet got cut out for a hot second. And that just kind of slowed everything down. Now that this untaps, my phone's gonna start working me. I need to get rid of this in order to have a shot, I think. Or draw Death Shadow. Push doesn't really do anything. I could just command make them discard, but they just, if it's like a land, they'll put it in their hand and keep it. You can't watch the French Open. We're just gonna pass. I could just go bang bang. It's probably okay to do. I don't know. I'm not really doing much else in my Kologon's command here. And, and I mean, I mean, I'm in a tough spot here regardless. The Embringer is very problematic. So Relic goes in. We discard a Matter of Shaper. Ditch our Thought Seas. This is even tougher now, this thing here. That sucked. I had like 25 people going. We had a good stream going here. The weather is really <laughs> shitty outside. Like, it's so windy. There's drawn, there's drawn three cards a turn, so. And this is a Smasher. It's another Endbringer. We're going to take about one more draw step. Uh. And it still doesn't even do it. I'm not even gonna show my opponent I have that. We're just dead. Because like we go, we we eat it, they ping it, and then we're still at the same thing here. We don't have a graveyard. And we're playing um and they're drawing they're just drawing like a million cards a turn. And we're gonna keep it the same. Run it back here. Man, that sucks we lost so many people. Makes me so sad. Had a good stream going. Second match in. Had... Oh. I'm just going to take this for today. Today is 6 3. Wow, this is going to be all. This, this you, These YouTube videos are going to be all sorts of messed up. Oh. Because it's still going. I would like to play first. Yeah, a tough hand of mulligan. If this produced a black source, I'd be so excited. But it makes it so all makes it so my six can trips are good draws. The problem is, is like I'm, I don't think I'm gonna be able to cast this angler reliably. This Liliana is pretty far off. I think it's going to be like an adult in Mulligan. Yeah, this hand's not much better, but we're going to keep it. My opponent Mulligan too. What a guy. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to cycle first and then fetch a watery grave and Seer Visions. I like saving my Seer Visions for my Street Race for Seer Visions, but. Alright, we're just gonna double shadow him. Double shadow on turn two and hope hopefully that's enough because we have to go one, three, five. If my opponent double dismembers me, I'll probably just throw up on the spot, but such is life. Yeah, the red the red decks, yeah. I mean, I like those decks are. I, I would think that those versions of those decks, white black would be good against. We got Chalice coming here. We 
we're kind of insulated against Chalice. Like, I mean, Chalice is obviously not going to be good, but, like, we're, we're on the board. We draw, we draw a card that's worth by Chalice. So I'm going to save that. I have 2k commands to draw. I could cast it in order to, like, get my delve going, but... We're not going to be tight on mana, so I don't think that's super important to do. Ratchet Bomb. That's tough. So now I need Colagon's Command pretty bad. Faithless Looting is not Colagon's Command. Now we're probably going to lose. This Ratchet Bomb is just going to smoke both of our shadows. My opponent goes keep all. Yeah, now we need Nasty. Just pass. One more draw step. Now we're just, we don't have an out, because even a Gurmag Angler can't block both of these. I guess I could go Liliana into Gurmag Angler. Yeah. Yeah, that sucked. We just weren't quite, we weren't quite fast enough, coupled with not being disruptive enough. Like, I needed one Thought Seize or something like that. Like, if I, if I get a Thought Seize, that game's not even close. But, without the Thought Seize... Just couldn't do it. Which is sad. I think that's kind of a tough. I don't know how I don't know how that matchup's supposed to go. I don't know if that one's supposed to be like really good or close or poor. I'm just not exactly sure. <laughs> Like to play first. Like keep. I'm going to hold this street wraith and lead on faithless looting because I go like into land serum visions and I'm in pretty good shape. Mostly, I just want to find another land in order to play double death shadow next turn. So I think I just get rid of the Fatal Push and this Thought Scour. And then I can even go, instead of going Double Shadow, I can go Shadow Angler. Let's see what my first draw is. Okay, so we're playing Dredge. Nice. This is going to wear the Battle Rage. Not having Battle Rage hurts us quite a bit. We're gonna get Watery Grave, Cycle Street Wraith, and then likely play Angler Shadow because it's just gonna be the, the faster clock with what the information we know. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Then we just gotta clear the way and just start attacking. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a tough one. You love dredge. Okay, so my opponent's got they hit a con flag. Here comes the blood ghast. They have a Golgari thug in their hand as well. Looks like they're just gonna smoke my shadow, yep. Yeah. I don't think I want either of these. We're just gonna attack, play another shadow, and then I will thought scour 
into hopefully I should have left the land on top, right? Because that would have made it so I could have gone Thought Scour into Angler. Yeah. Yep, yep, that was not good. That was a mistake on my part. Just didn't count, right? Just did not count right there. Hopefully we don't get punished for it. So here comes a Narc Amoeba. I want to hit a Fetch Land. Fetch Land and we have a chance to win. Loaming back lands. Dark Blast that. Oh, Jesus Christ. I knew they had that Dark Blast. We're just like focusing on too many things, making some mistakes. Yeah, now we just got super punished for that. So let's cycle this. So now I probably just go, I kind of want to push this attack and then play another angler if I draw a land my turn's so insane because I go I can go push I think I'm just not supposed to push this because what are my options here if I go if I go push here Play Death Shadow. I check them for five, then I have eight on the board. If I go Thought Scour, then there's no guarantee that I get to push this and put them down, but I get to put two anglers in the play. I think it's better to go push Shadow. Then I get the angler and play pretty easily next turn. And one, I'm like, what? See, if I had to land, I would have been able to play Angler. So, there's an oversight on my part. Let's hope they don't play Cathartic Reunion. Okay, here we go. They've already flipped two Narc Amoebas. They haven't played a land, so like everything's gonna come back. So they have ink, thug, ink, uh, imp, thug, imp in their hand, and a bunch of lands. I just take this because it puts them dead on the board. Because even if this six, they can't discard a card. Yeah, we just take this on the chin. They probably play a land. They probably go land Golgari Thug. And now if I hit a removal spell, I'm in good shape. Yeah, there's the Thug. All right, so if I attack with both, play an angler, block here, take two, take three, take seven, go to one. They don't have, and then like, they don't have a con flag in their hand because they just had two lands and then the two stinkweed imps. And then they need to produce a bunch of blockers for next turn. Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna attack with both and then play another angler. I go to one on the attack back because I block this amalgam. Oh, they're gonna put Narc Amoeba back on top. I don't know enough. I don't play enough against Dredge to know like all the little tips and tricks here. And like I got just made a mistake there, which it's my fault. We're just playing all sorts of poor here today. Uh, Serum Visions. I'm gonna leave the Fatal Push. Even though it doesn't, like the Snapcaster's not a live draw now anyways. It is quite likely, but am I gonna win that anyways? Right, like, they have double blocker. They have triple, they have quad blockers here. 
And then blood gas comes back, block here, take enough. Yep. That sucks. We like had the tools to win that game, and I think if I could have got the angler down, we would have won. And that was just my mistake. I just didn't count right with my delving. Okay, so I don't really have too much for this matchup. I feel like these are okay. The Kologon's command's not okay. And the fatal pushes aren't great. I like the bolts better than the pushes. Yeah, I'm just like not awake this morning. I'm just doing all kinds of stupid shit. <sighs> One, two, three. This is where I just I get super punished not having battle rage. I don't really know. I can bring in last hopes. Last hope picks off Narcomibas. But that seems kind of mopey. I like the stubs to hit conflag and cathartics. I think we're just gonna I think we're gonna run it like this. Yeah, we are not not playing super well this morning. This hand's just like not very good, but I don't think I can mulligan it. And now it's like, what do I fetch? I probably have to fetch Watery Grave because I needed to do damage to myself. It turns off the lightning bolt, but I don't think the bolt's going to be super relevant this early in the game. I was wondering if you have tried Marty Death Shadow and what your opinion is. I have not played uh, tried Marty Death Shadow. I don't really know what the pull to it is, though. I don't really know. Are you building it with, like, Lingering Souls? Or are you building it with, like, Pyromancers? I don't know what the, I don't know what the appeal is to it. Okay, so we're gonna take. We're gonna take this looting. Then I'm gonna thoughts use this cathartic reunion. There's the bloodstain mire. So we're gonna get steam vents with this land. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically 100% thought seizing this. So I might as well just do it first. Double cathartic. Okay, well, now we're going to stub one of them. <clears throat> so we're kind of stifling my opponent's development. There's black weed cliffs. Should have held that. Again, I'm just playing like too quickly here, not sequencing well, not being confident with my decisions. They probably just ditch all three of the, oh, they ditch Amalgam. I'm going to stink weed in. I don't really want any of these Snapcaster Mages. I want Gurmag Anglers and Death Shadows at this point. <laughs> We're digging. And I guess I could have kept one Snapcaster Mage to be able to snap Seer Vision, but that just is, seems like it's going to be too slow. There's the thug. So they have a stinkweed imp in their hand, and I don't know the last card. All right, I need a threat. Uh, get rid of one bolt. Uh, OK, 
Okay. They don't have any treasures. They're just gonna take a no they have stampede then. Okay, so this is gonna bring back amalgam. Which isn't good. Just gonna take this. So now comes back. I kinda just wanna bolt this thing. Probably will end up bolting it. Let's go to six. Flashback faithless looting. Look for a guy. Because my swamp's already here. It's like I gotta do it. I gotta find I gotta find something here. So I'm gonna go to four on the attack. They don't have a con flag in their graveyard, but they're likely to find one. I'm just in a, I'm just in a lot of trouble, I think. Should just, just yeah, we're super dead. Oh, we just didn't find the guy, and which sucks. My top twenty cards of my deck, I just didn't find the dude there. Oh man, and that matchup's probably that matchup's egregious, especially after I've kind of adjusted my deck list here a little bit to fight some fair decks. There's not any battle rages. And because like yesterday in Elmoto, I've been playing against just uh, in paper and online. I played nothing but like a lot of Mardu Pyromancer decks, a lot of um, a lot of Jeskai and Jun, and like and humans. But when I play against humans, my sideboard plan like oftentimes shifts so much where it doesn't even feel like it's about the battle rages. It feels like it's about like these removal spells. And I, I could have won the first game there. I should have won the first game. I, I don't think I could have won the second game, but I threw away the first game for sure. So it is what it is. I'm going to keep his hand. I got double cantrip. So if I hit a black source, it's going to be sweet because it's like thought seizing your opponent after they mulligan is great. This guy's usually a mid-range player. That's a great draw. Um, I think I'm just going to get a water. No, I have to get blood crypt because of how the faithless looting is in my deck. This is a hand that we're going to take like a Liliana. Yep. The Tarmogoy's not going to do anything. The Bloodbraid Elf might do something though. So like we're going to dig. We have a Snapcaster. So hopefully we can dig the Snapcaster Mage before this Bloodbraid Elf comes down. Okay, Death Shadow. So I could just take a hit from this Tarmogoyf. But I could cycle, put me to 11. Thoughts he's a creature, put me to seven. They have Fatal Push though, so that doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. I do want both of these cards. I think we're just gonna play this game slow. So we're gonna put on top, put on top. I'm gonna push this. I think I stacked those poorly. They're wondering if they should attack or not. So they know what's going on. My opponent knows what's up. I play against this guy from time to time. I think this guy is a pretty good mid-range player. Yeah, I'm just gonna hit this now. The elf. And now we're just gonna try to set something up here. Just thought scour myself, because we're not gonna need the stubborn denial. Okay, so now we can play 
both shadows and have stubborn denial up. So this should be a wrap, I think. Just having two seven sevens plus protection is where we want to be. This is a big thing. Another reason, like this is, I, I like this deck a lot because I think I think it does very well against these mid range decks. These like giant mid range, like mid range decks that don't have the. I guess it does well against giant. Oh, we bit me. Oh my god. That's so bad. Now I have to hold up snap push. You dropped like a maelstrom pulse and two for one. Oh my god. Oh, I need a second. That was so bad. I'm gonna snap push one of these for sure. And then next turn. God, this is disgusting. That's such a good hit because now I can go, if I go Snapcaster Mage, I guess I just have to go Snapcaster Mage and target, target Thought Scour and not block this. Oh, that's so gross. Cause like if I target a removal spell, my opponent just doesn't fire up and I get nothing out of my Snapcaster Mage. Probably won't do that. I just, I enjoy this deck a lot. And they take, they took my Death Shadow. I just enjoy the deck too much. And like, I don't ever win with anything else. I'm gonna do this now. Okay, we're not going to block. Okay. It's not bad. So now I'm just I'm actually just gonna get in here. And then just snap push whatever my opponent does. I'm dead a lightning bolt, but like such is life. And when I kill this treetop village, it's actually going to make it so my opponent can't activate this raging ravine unless they have another land. Get this fatal push here. Get rid of this thing. I think I'm, I can fetch my swamp. So I think I'm gonna hold this. It just cuts off another draw. Like it makes K command not relevant. All right, we're gonna win this game now. So my opponent can't kill my Death Shadow and attack with the Raging Ravine. I could flashback this looting and then play my Shadow. And I would ditch this looting. But is that worth going to two? What's the over under on top deck bolt? They only play like 2k commands. I actually think it's right to go. Do I have a swamp? Is my swamp in milled yet? I think I'm just gonna go get the swamp. Flash this back just to be mana efficient. Like I'm I'm no hang on. What am I doing? No, I shouldn't. No, because I'm gonna I'm gonna ditch the looting no matter what. So I just want to Whoa, did I not click on the right one? Ugh, I'm everywhere, this is so bad. I'm just going nuts this morning. That's just so frustrating. Like I just clicked on, like I'm, I'm literally talking out my plays and I'm clicking on, 
Uh, 100% getting top deck balls. I'm literally like talking my plays out accurately, but like doing something completely different. Like my finger's not connecting. So my opponent's dead. So now we're going to do this right. Flash this one back. We're looking for just... I only got two fatal pushes left in my deck. So, we're still going to go for it. No, this... So, I get two looks at a one of. Versus, if I just Thought Scour, I can do more with my mana. Yeah, I'm just going to Thought Scour myself. Oh my god, there's the Fatal Push. Right there. Oh, that's great. So my opponent, I'm just gonna attack with this, sh this shadow because if my if I attack with these two, my opponent can theoretically go to one, right? They can go to one, and then I'm dead on the board if they don't flip a spell to Bob. And then I'm going to flash back the looting now to be just mana efficient. They get two looks now at, at like lightning bolt, but, oh, they just died of their bob. Oh. All right, so we're bringing everything that's grindy. These six cards. We're going to cut. I really don't like stubborn denial in these mid range matchups. Saved by the RNG, yes. I don't like stubborn denial in the mid range matchups. Um, I like to trim on some street rates, and I'll probably just trim four street rates. Like the game's gonna go long. I don't think I can afford to like hemorrhage my life total against. A deck that, when goes long, has so many resources. And I've already got these dismembers. I've got three fatal pushes to handle Tarmor Wives. Yeah, it's like, I feel like I have a... As long as I don't get... Like, obviously, I, when you play against... When I play against Jund, I can just get Bloodbraid off out of the game. Like, when, whenever I play against this deck, I find that I'm advantaged in the early game and advantaged in the late game. In the mid game, when they can like start blood raid elfing, and then like they can just like go efficiently use a resource to animate raging ravine, then I feel like I'm in trouble. But when it goes in the late game, I can start looping snapcaster mages. I feel like I'm doing more powerful things than they are. So if I can just survive, if I can either like by cutting these street rates, I kind of eliminate my run them over plan. But I'm also on the draw, so maybe on the play, I'll look to board out like. A discard spell or two and bring more street wraith back in. But I think this is what we're gonna do for now. I'm gonna go get some more coffee. Hopefully the coffee pulls my head out of my ass. This hand sucks, but you, like it's, you can't mulligan against John. It's what cost me yesterday. I just mulled a six twice. Like my sevens were no landers. That's a wicked draw. My sevens were no landers, so like I had to, but it just felt so bad. I just needed like one more resource in each one of the games. Okay. So I have to take Bob. This hand's pretty good. So I take Bob. Then next turn I probably take whichever two drop my opponent doesn't play, and then I Liliana Edict. Make it so hopefully that they need another spell. Like hopefully I can get a two for one out of my Liliana. Like they can't attack it. Like that's what we're looking to do. Is to, we just want to make it so they have to Maelstrom Pulse this Liliana. They ripped. 
So now, like, I want to leave them with Fatal Push so that they, but then if they hit a land, they just go Fatal Push 2 drop. So I just got to take this Fatal Push. And then if they tap out to Maelstrom Pulse, my Death Shadow, then I can Edict this. I need to, I, I need to, like, make it so they can't double spell. Like, double spelling is, like, the most important thing that I have to stop. And taking this Fatal Push, I think, is the most important. Like, their hand's so clogged up with stuff that if I can, like, turn off their efficiency, I think I have a chance. I think that Mardu Death Shadow does not have a... So they drew that. Okay. So this is interesting because they're probably going to get rid of Bob. I think that Mardu Death Shadow doesn't have something compelling like Tarmogoyf to play to beat your opponent down. It doesn't have an ability to play a long game like Snapcaster Mage. And like Lingering Souls is just irrelevant against so much of the format. Like Lingering Souls is aces when it's good and it's just irrelevant. The same thing with Young Pyromancer. It's not enough of a clock unless you're playing Delve cards in your Mardu Shadow deck. This sucks. I could go looting into Angler and hopefully hit a Fatal Push or a Bolt. But I only have one red source. I don't have another red source. I've definitely made some mistakes playing more red cards in my deck and not fetching appropriately. I could play this Liliana, just Edict. They probably ditch the Bob, keep the Tarmogoyf. So they could just ditch the Tarmac Wife, pulse my Death Shadow and attack with Bob and continue to draw cards. I think that my best way to do it is to go like Scalding Tarn, Faithless Looting for something to kill this, and then play Gurmag Angler. Like this Liliana is just not super great on the way the board sits. But it definitely does suck that I've eliminated a few of my outs by not having double red. Yeah, we just, all right, at least I get to take the pulse now. They're gonna be able to eat my, where's my opponent? My opponent doesn't have sorceries, but I need all my sorceries. So I can't like effectively, no, they have a sorcery. I can't drink this time of life. Uh, Damnation's not bad. Okay, so they have a Rage Ravine. Here comes the Scavenging Ooze. Scavenging Ooze eats my lat. Yep. The sad part about what's going on here is now they can just Damnation me and kill me with um, Manlands. So I can't attack. Because if I attack they just like fire up this treetop village it's really unfortunate that we missed a removal spell in the top 16 cards and then they top deck this bob all right i feel like i have a chance now they're gonna ditch the spell bomb probably inquisition so we gotta get rid of this liliana the last hope. And now I'm dead I'm dead in two to the treetop, but like such is life. There's the bomb. Yeah. Uh, so I did make I made a mistake by not fetching a second red source earlier in the game because I did not give myself an out 
to play a second red source and then bolt the bob. Um, which was a mistake. The top deck bob was just like super savage. Like we, we had we could line up a way to deal with everything that my opponent had going on as long as like I could use my life total as a resource and not have them draw extra cards with a bob, which is why we took the bob. It's kind of gross, but it can kill Dark Confidant. So, I'm going to use Seer Visionings for a Black Source. And it's not even too bad to have extra lands in this matchup because we do want to eventually get to the point where we can start Snapcastering Colon's Command. Okay. Um, so, I know I want the second land, the third land. I don't think I want the fourth land. And it might as well be a fetch land to be able to help me with Delve. So now I have a pretty efficient turn next turn. I can go like Inquisition, Lightning Bolt, your thing. My opponent's got a discard spell. Okay. They probably just take Snapcaster. Yep. Okay, we got all this set up here so i guess i'm just going to take a bob i want to be i don't want them to have like discard i want them to have two discard spells in order to make sure bob sticks so they're probably going to play tarmogoyf so they drew a discard spell so then they remove one of our removal spells take a shadow okay so my opponent is settling in here that is nasty. So one, two. So if I get rid of my land. I mean, I'm just going to delve as least as possible to make it so my other Snapcast Mages are alive. So let's get rid of my land. I mean, they have a land anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm um, going to leave Snapcaster Mage. I guess I actually just leave Serum Visions. Well... That seems kind of OP. I'm going to leave the Snapcaster Mage. That was a good rip. We got both my opponent's twos covered. That's what they drew. Get that off the board. And hope they don't draw like a... If they don't draw Liliana, I think we're in pretty good shape. Big blood right off into Liliana. Okay, damnation. All right. So now I'm gonna thought seize the Bob because I think I'm gonna need my. I need to trade resources, and this lightning bolt is going to trade with this treetop village. I'm just gonna do it. If my opponent's got land Bob or something like that. Then, you know, we got got but I don't think I can just sit here and take this damage. Though, if I take the damage and then bolt the other turn, if I draw the Death Shadow, I can play it. So I probably should do that. And then it makes it so that if he has a Bob, then my opponent can't play it. So let's just take the three damage, make Death Shadow a live draw. I play another tree top, okay. Okay, we drew our thought seizes. Oh, this has not been good. If phase including would actually be sick right now. Oh, oh I'm just getting savaged. This is such a frustrating way to lose too, because like my opponent's not doing anything. You know what I mean? Like, they're just like knocking the top of the deck and hoping. All right, let's. Well, I can't even cast it. All right, we're gonna go to the next. We're gonna go to the next league here. Ugh. All right, I'm going to run to the bathroom, and then I'm going to jump back 
into another league here. I'm going to put up this here. And I'll be right back. Jump back into another one here. I don't want to change the deck yet because I've only played four matches with it. So. Though I should I should change one thing. I know I sh I should have a TBR in my deck somewhere because like I should have t I should have Team of Battle Rage in my seventy five. I always forget that because like. Because I just need, I, you need that out. You need that thing to draw to. So maybe we'll cut one of these and put in one team of battle rage. Alright, and then let's just jump in the other league here. Join league. Bleed and shadow. Put my computer glasses on so that my eyes don't get muffed up. God, I messed up these glasses somehow. They're just all out of whack, like. I should be streaming more in the upcoming future. I don't really, I don't really have a lot of events that I'm looking to go to. So. All right. Dude, I, Alexander, the, there's a extension on your browser that you should be able to see. I gotta get rid of Nightbot. Fucking Nightbot is just like. All right, Nightbot banned. Got rid of them. Nightbot's just been like such a, so annoying recently. Okay, this hand is pretty good. Hopefully we're playing... It's really good if we're playing against a creature deck. Uh, 
we're not playing a creature deck, I need to take the saluting here quickly in order to filter through what I'm doing. Breeding pool. So I'm playing against creature deck. This has got to be like a noble hierarch deck. Yeah. All right, hands of gas. Um, this is going to give me black red. I'm just going to push this. We have a pretty efficient turn next turn too. Like if they play a moron, I can go like thought seize and then kill your moron. So it'd be annoying is if they play if they play a um oh playing Spantel Drazi. Alright, Matt, why why do you think it is? Or Matt's Matson? Matson, is that better or just Matt? I don't want to Mess your name up. If there was anything that good that came out of yesterday, I literally got almost a hundred likes on one of my tweets. Just kind of like achievement unlocked. So I'm definitely gonna look the thought seeds here because I do not want to get thought nuts here next turn. I can play Death Shadow now. Nice. Okay. Okay, so Drazi Displacer is annoying, but I can deal with it. I can't deal really deal with Reality Smasher or Drowner of Hope. So I think I'm actually just going to take... I can just block the Reality Smasher, and the Drowner of Hope is going to what's really become a problem. So I think I'm just going to take this Drowner of Hope, and then play a land and pass, and look to just... Kill the Eldrazi Displacer. To be honest, I haven't been sure how I feel about Death Shadow since last summer. It's definitely not as good as it. Like, when people didn't know how to play against it, the deck was unreal. But people do know how to play against it now. It is just like, it's in the humans category of deck. Like, it's it's a linear, it's a deck that is like a, an like an aggro deck that is disruptive and you can only go so wrong with that style of deck. I can actually snap Thought Seize this Reality Smasher. Or I can get two threats down. One, two, three, four, five, and then leave the Thought, leave this in here. I think I like doing that. I think we're just gonna get, we're just gonna get two threats down. I'm gonna leave the Thought Seize in my graveyard. Matter of Madsen. Currently my shadows for the humans, hay bears, and this kind of stuff. Need to draw like a god too. So I don't I actually don't think that the humans match up. Now that I've played this Grixis Shadow the way that um, I built it recently, I don't think the humans matchup is that bad. Um I think this shadow's good right now, you can win every um the Jeskai decks, I think if you learn to play against the Jeskai decks, you're in good shape. Like, because the Jeskai decks have a lot of irrelevant cards against you, like Lightning Bolt and Lightning Helix. You, I think it's right in this metagame to up the number of stubs in your deck right now. And, like, their deck is so clunky that as long as you don't get Supreme Verdicted out of the game, that you can get under them, I think. And then after sideboard, you get cards like Liliana, more Liliana's, Colorons Commands, more counter spells, and you just, like, out-efficient them. Let's take a look here. So my opponent's hand is probably like nothing but Reality Smashers and Drowner of Hopes. Oh, no. I'm, I'm going to Thought Seize. I want... Okay. Elder Deep Fiend. Holy shit. So I just take this Reality Smasher. Smack my opponent for 11. Hold this back. The squid, yeah. I think Tassiger is just like very underwhelming. Like, you want, you just want a 5-5. Five five. You want something that's huge that can trade with Reality Smasher, attack through Tarmogoyf. You know, I think that's just what you want. I think it's worth the, the one delve. 
one more down to do it. All right, I gotta think here. So if I go fetch shock, I'm dead to this reality smasher attack. If I just go shock, I go to five, I chump block, and I'm good. And then if I go to eight, this is eight, 13, then both of these creatures are lethal next turn. So my opponent's just, I don't think my opponent has a draw. Sky Spawner. If they draw Sky Spawner, they get another draw. And they can emerge off it. Oh, Sky Spawner would have been nuts. No, it wouldn't have been. No, because they, they couldn't emerge off it because they need double blue. Dude, the Elder Deep Fiend. I think Black Green Rock's actually the best Black Green deck, in my opinion. I have played a Tomb Stalker. I have played a Tomb Stalker. That guy is... That guy is great. So I actually kind of like all my Lilianas against this deck. Because, like, there are sometimes when Last Hope's insane. Because it shrinks Reality Smashers, picks off... Um, picks off Eldrazi Sky Spawner tokens, picks off the Sky Spawner, picks off Drowner of Hopes. And then sometimes they just have huge creatures that you can eat it. They might be too slow in the draw, though. Actually, I almost don't mind Colagon's Command as well, because they bring in Engineer Explosives, and they often have expensive cards in their hands, so they need lands and spells. So I have a lot of cards that I might like to bring in. Um, I don't like my counter spells at all. Um, I don't even really like Disdainful Stroke or Ceremonious Rejection, because they play four caverns. So I kind of, I, I know I don't want these. I think, let me, I'm going to try to make room for two more of these. Though I'm not exactly sure what it is. I could, like, hedge against Graveyard Hate and go something like this. Which I kind of like doing. Colagon's Command, could, like, I could buy the Colagon's Command's pretty medium. Like, it's, it's very nice that it can kill Engineer Explosives. And their deck is so clunky, oftentimes you're going to get something relevant with the discard. But if I'm cutting cards for Graveyard Hate, how good is this card? Hey. Billy. Come here, bud. You're up there making all kinds of noise. What are you doing? This deck might actually be so much better than the play because these these Lilianas are like so they're just infinitely better than the play. I think they have use now, so I'm gonna bring them in. I could bring in this Fatal Push too. So I'm actually just gonna cut one of these and look to now. Yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut one of these. I guess what we're gonna do here. We're gonna try to we're gonna maneuver things that are different by playing three bolts in the main. I am not, I cut one bolt in order to make room for some Faithless Lootings. But on the list I played, this is what I played yesterday at Regionals. And if I was going to play Grixis Shadow without Faithless Looting, I would play something close to this. I would probably, like, off the top of my head, come on. Off the top of my head, I would switch a Battle Rage for a Colagon's Command in the main deck. I wouldn't do this. This is what I played at regionals. And if I was going to change anything, I would cut one of these and I would add another Colgon's Command to the main deck. Which is over here. Regionals did not go well. It did not go well. I struggled. Um, so I have a thought seize to deal with Early disruption. Like, I think I'm going to keep this hand. Because I can thought he's a rest in peace. I can push a noble hierarch. And I have double redraw. This hand's very painful though. So if I don't find a death shadow, I could get run over pretty quickly. That's scary shit. That's just the scariest opening in modern right there. Colagon's command. Alright, I'm going to save this one in case I hit a uh, serum visions. Okay, Sky Spawner. 
I'm gonna take the Sky Spawner. The Sky Spawner is the most annoying card here, and it gets them closer. God, they have double Temple. Jeez. Yeah, I gotta take the Sky Spawner. It just makes mana. I'm gonna slow them down. Because next turn they go Eldrazi Temple. Hopefully we draw land. Then we draw another land, and then hopefully I can go. Um, I can go Snap Thought Season Drowner. Dude, I am not, like, that's, the Storm deck is, like, there's only two people in, like, the world that win with that Storm deck. Both of them won regionals last week, or this weekend. That's gas. Okay, um, I think it's looting time. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And at this point, probably, probably one snap. It's either the Snapcaster Mage or the Kologon's Command. And if I get rid of the Snapcaster Mage, I can bring it back with the K Command and do something else. So I think this is what we're going to do here. Okay. Yeah, so now we're probably going to go like Shock Return. Three basic or whatever that is. Oh, there's three people that won the storm. That's because all of these three color mid range decks think they're good against storm, in my opinion. But I don't. I do not think they are. Like, they're all just so big and clunky. You know, like the Jun decks play twenty five lands and Bloodbraid Elf. The Mardu Pyromancer is probably as close as it gets, and even the Jeskai deck only plays three counter spells in their main deck at least. Okay, so what am I doing here? I'm probably just going to fetch a basic, shock this, return my Snapcaster Mage. I could cycle, but like, then my life total is getting kind of low. I can't even like defend. I guess I can wait for their turn because it might be worth hitting a, th hitting a Thought Knots here. I really don't want to cycle this Street Wraith. Like, I'm feeling my life total is getting dangerously, getting in peril. Problem is, they just have so many live draws off the back half of this. Um, You'd cycle this, because you say the... You think the upside's high enough here. Alright, we'll give it a whirl. Now, the whole thing here, if we're not beating Reality Smasher, am I just like... Dude, am I going to get Deep Fiend here? What's my opponent waiting for? Is it better to like bring this back or the Snapcaster Mage? Because we don't have a lot going on with Snapcaster here. Yeah, it's also, I also think that taking out the Street Race to bring in PZ out of the main deck. This would be bad against Big Man combo, but we just have all this humanity, for example. Okay. So you have my coast. I've only got two cards and one's a waste. We're just gonna We're gonna wait till they go to combat. And then we're just gonna return Snapcaster Mage and shock this thing. And just hope they miss. Draw land. Reality Smasher. God, don't cast it. No. All right. Okay. So how do I win? I flash. I go fetch my island. Flashback. Faithless looting and hit a Gurmag Angler, or basically hit a Death Shadow. That's how we win this game. Yeah. 
It is nice there that the looting gave us, you know, an extra look at the card we needed. Okay. I kind of want to have this. I want this Colgons command back in my deck. So I know they they got to play like between. They might play four explosives after sideboard. Like I, I could see them having four E's in their 75. Because they're only. Like that and Path are their only good removal spells. And like maybe this just isn't a Snapcaster Mage matchup. Shave a Street Wraith. I feel like I have to cut one of these two cards here if I want to do this I, I think I kind of want all my removal spells I want to be able to kill a Drazi Displacer they're early they're early dorks this can scale up to a Thought Nuts here I need Dismember I want to be able to like return I want to be able to kill oh maybe this just isn't that good yeah I'm just gonna go with it's not just it's not great Yeah, I mean, that was, that was tough. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna keep this. This hand's very good. Lily on the Veil is very good against this kind of a deck. It's a deck that needs, like, it's, it, this deck's basically, it's somewhat, it's not a combo deck, but it is very much a critical mass deck. All right, and this we just take this Eldrazi Sky Spawner because it, it's very it's good against Liliana's Edict and it's plus. I don't know if I'm gonna snap this Thoughtseize off this turn or not. Let's see what I got here. So if I'm gonna Thoughtseize. I'll probably take. Like none of these cards seem that good to take. But what can my opponent have hit? They obviously either hit a land or a or like a three drop or a four drop. I think the upside's high enough here where I'm gonna do this. I might regret this. Alright, I hit another drowner. Okay, play this. Probably gonna get a tap land. Then this will get like an island. So I'll probably get like Blood Crypt Island ditch the steam vents. I can control my life total well enough on its own now. With this dismember, so I don't necessarily want to really hemorrhage myself. I hope my opponent plays a noble hierarch here. Like a noble hierarch would be very good for us. It kind of sucks that like this the way this game's lining up, this path is a free discard. Alright, Snapcaster Thoughtseize is pretty pretty solid. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna play this one. Snap Thoughtseize is definitely gonna put a hurt on my opponent's resources next turn. Cause like we took up here, they probably ditched their path. And then we're gonna make it we're gonna make it pretty difficult then to keep lands and spells in their hand. I remember when I used to play, when I played Gun Shadow a lot, like the white, like when the, when Grixis Death Shadow was at like the pinnacle of its game, I played a lot of Gun Shadow, and I played like three of these in the main deck, sometimes four and Lingering Souls after sideboard, and it was like, oh my, you're just such a grind engine. There's a cavern. Thought Nuts here would be annoying, but beatable. Yep. Like, we're going to just... I might just dismember it and go up. I don't know. Because they're going to take my Snapcaster.
I guess they could. They could take the dismember, and if I go snap Thoughtseize, then I have to take Path in order to keep my Liliana around. But it just seems like the Snapcaster Mage is what you want to do. Yeah. All right. Now I just kind of want to dismember this and go. The problem is if I go up, this path is annoying. I can just edict them. I feel like I have to keep going up because if my opponent gets this Drowner of Hope in play, there's going to be really bad news. And if I keep going, it's like, if I go dismember, I can actually go dismember, hope the card is shitty. Discard it, play hopefully discard Path to Exile, play Death Shadow. And if that's the case, how much how many points do I want to take? Do I just want to go to seven? Probably, because then I can block Reality Smasher. We're gonna ditch this. Hopefully they ditch their path. They did, yes. Then hopefully they don't have temple. No temple. They have a ten oh. They had a temple. I feel like I am running poorly today. Now I just have to like chew through these. Go to combat, see if they tap this thing down. Take it easy, Archmage. I could, I should have Inquisition first. This is poor sequencing. I'm a tad frustrated. Hopefully this hits. Yeah, it did. <clears throat> what do you got? You got a Sky Spawner. Tap, six me, then the, I'm dead to this. Man, it has been one of those days today. It's been one of those days. Joe boy, I can't win today. What's going on? What's going on? Can you help me? Can you help me, buddy? Oh, they did the wrong one. Oh. I guess this is still, I'm still dead on board. Because I just go tap, tap cracking for seven. <sighs> Man. Yes, outplayed. Thoroughly outplayed. I hope everyone's having a good day today. I hope it's going better than mine is, Jesus. I'm just getting torched. Oh, I wasn't even logged into my streamlabs. I couldn't even tell if anybody followed. You guys should all hit the follow button. I'm trying to get to a thousand. If I get to a thousand, then I will be able to look for other sponsorships and rent more. So 2526, Alexandria, Alexander, and Matson. If you guys are still in the chat, I appreciate you guys for following. Philly boy, you little 46 pound beast. Do you want to come up here? Do you want to say hi to Twitch chat, Philly? Philly, do you want to say hi to Twitch chat? Come here, come here. Oh, you big boy. Oh, Philly. Say hi to Twitch chat, buddy. What's going on? Philly, look at Twitch chat. 
What are you doing, Billy? You're so big. You're just 46 pounds of beef, Phil boy. Mwah. All right, I would like to play first. All right, you want to get down? Okay, so I'm gonna keep this cycle one, hold the cycle one for next turn. He is a super cutie. There. Phil boy is the man. All right, there's our homeboy. Watery grave. All right. Philly is very cute. What is going on here? I'm just gonna take this Lotus Cobra, I guess. These could be anything. There's Lotus, I don't have an answer for this Lotus Cobra. All right, this is where we're gonna have to go go to like a mile we're gonna have to finish this game quickly because i don't really know what's going on here like i know it's kind of like a sahili rye deck but these decks can do anything i don't like serum visions first mcconer i would rather get information so then i know what to do with my serum visions because i have a street wraith to cycle next turn found an oracle so let me go get I should get a steam. I should probably get steam vents. So I have the faithless losing the deck now, so I need more red. But I want to class blue spells as well. I don't want to get steam vents, even though I fucking hate steam vents. Maybe. I don't want, I do want this, because we might end up wanting to cycle, or flood out some lands. <coughs> I learned so much more about this deck as soon as I started to hold my Street Wraiths. The regionals, it just was not, it was not good. Like, I, I made a couple, I made a couple judgment plays, like, and I was just like on the, oh man, they hit a land. The, their last card's Ozanissa, and they're playing off the top. They can actually shop, can they shop themselves? Yeah, they can, holy shnikes. I played Eldrazi Tron in round one, and like got, I, I made like an aggressive play that got me punished. Like I could have played a Gurmag Angler, no, they had two cards in their hand. I didn't know either of them. I could have played a Gurmag Angler that was a 5-5 five five instead of a 5-5 five five Shadow. And I decided to play the Shadow because I had Bolt plus Battle Rage plus Fetch Land in my hand. So they were just dead next turn. And then they had, they had the, uh, they had the Dismember. So, and then the game kind of stalled out a little bit. Like they, you know, and it was just a little awkward. Um, I don't know how to sequence this. Are you still in the chat, BMJ? Like, how, how do you sequence something like this? Like, I I want I know I want to save my Street Wraith for the Serum Visions, but I don't know if I'm supposed to loot first, or, cause like I can loot in, no, okay, I can loot into the cards that I scry and save this. Okay, we're gonna go like this. Serum Visions, Snapcaster Mage. I think I'm gonna bottom this Snapcaster Mage. If I had more removal spells, then I'd think about it. I want removal. Um, uh, do you like, oh. um then I, I played against Marty Pyromancer and I beat that deck. And then I played against uh so I'm probably gonna ditch, let's see the frickin' steam vents. I should've just got a blood crypt. I don't really want, so what am I delving? I'm delving away next turn. I'm gonna ditch the land and the serum visions. Cause I can snap the serum visions back at some point. 
Um, then I played against Mario Pyromancer. I stomped that deck. I played against Jund, and I lost. I made a mistake against Jund in the game, second game. The big problem was I mulliganed to six in both games. That just kind of cost me, I think. I think I was down too many resources. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to cycle this now, though, because my, my, I'm going to be using my mana, so I'm not going to have the option. Okay. Now we should get in here. Then you ditch Land Wraith. You'd have kept the Snapcasters, even though the Snapcasters, like, if I had a removal spell, or you'd have kept the Serum Visions. Oh, okay. I feel like I don't want the Serum Visions without the Wraith. What is this? Belladar Guardian. Okay. So they play their township. They have four they have four cards. Like I would have Yeah, maybe. Maybe that was right to do. I am definitely struggling a lot with the sequencing, the cantrip sequencing. So I think I'm gonna snap Inquisition that and then play Angler. Because they still have birds. Now, I don't want I don't want to interact with this on the battlefield. And I'm probably going to fetch shock to 8. Especially if my opponent doesn't block, then my death shadow is lethal next turn. So if I go to 8, there, then I put them in like the abyss. They have a bird. So maybe I should actually just get ready to settle in and play a longer game. Cuz bird bird is like 8 life. It's just green 8 life. Yeah, I think we're gonna like, I think we're gonna slow down. I'm just gonna get a basic. And then just go snap Inquisition and then play Angler. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, we're going to deal with the voice resurgence. As annoying as that's going to be. All right, one, two, three, four. I don't think we're in the... We don't need this... We don't need two serum visions. We don't need that many serum visions. But I'm going to keep one street wraith, so if we draw a K command, it's live. But is that... Does that count, like... Does that also include, what is this? Bird. Billy. Does that count when you have like the Faithless Lootings? That's what I would do with the cantrip. God, my, so my bonus, last card hand is Sacred Foundry. I need to attack. I need to like get into this board, I think. Jeez. So what I really want to do here is do like a pretty good attack. Like attack with both of these. They probably go like block, block, and then maybe Faithless Looting to give myself the most looks at Lightning Bolt or Fatal Push. Because I would assume this becomes three power and then I can take care of the token. Scour Visions Looting, okay. Because like, I don't really want, like, Snap Serum Visions is kind of, feels kind of mopey. I want to, I think I want to Faithless Looting and leave this Blood Crypt after I attack. I'm gonna hold this back. Because I assume my opponent goes block, block to make a token. So and we're gonna hold this back here to chump block this token if we need to. I just I need to start like putting a lot of aggression onto my opponent's board or this Gavany Township's just gonna like run me over. Because right now I'm going to two three, four, off this township attack next turn, assuming I can block this voice of resurgence. So now that my opponent didn't block with, or didn't block, like the voice is a three, three, now I almost kind of want to snap Serum Visions because like I've only got two draws in my deck to kill this. And I think I'm gonna go snap Serum Visions and still leave out the Blood Crypt. Because that gives me, lets me draw, ang no, doesn't let me draw angler. Let me draw Death Shadow, Bolt. 
or push. And it just gets another body on the floor. Are you gonna loot are you looking to loot here or are you looking to um snap serum regions? Because I don't want them to draw a path and then kill me. And I, I only have two looks at something that kills this elemental token. If I had four looks, I'd much be much more inclined to go snap loot or to leave this looting in here. Yeah, I, th I think it's better to go snap. I think it's better to go snap visions instead of looting. If this was a three three, I would loot. But I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna snap visions. It just gets another body on the board as well. Okay, so there's push. So push, snap, push. Next turn is gonna be great. I think I want both of these. Maybe I don't want the angler. I've got enough of a board presence to win this game, I think. Okay, I'm going to put the angler on the bottom. I'm going to put the push on top. We would have hit that push. So, it is relevant. Um, we'll pass. We should have just a lethal attack. Like, two creatures. They block the big things. And I get in there with two of these. I'm not sure if you're in good shape versus pet anyway, since your opponent gets to stabilize the board with Gavini in play. You're in good shape. Shall I? All right, well, I'm glad we have this fetch land. <clears throat> so now we go push, push on our turn. <coughs> My opponent doesn't have a really good attack, right? Because if you attack with this, if they attack with this, they just die because I removed two things. So they kind of got to hold up here, I think. I think attacking would be not intelligent for because our last card's Sacred Foundry. We know that. So let's think here before we block. Push, push, snap, push. Block, block, take four, they're dead. This last card's Sacred Foundry. They can't do anything else. Yeah, we got it. So we just take five. And we go to one off of our fetch land. All right, nice. Uh, we'll just grab an island. My boat goes nice luck draw, but I knew it was there. Cool. All right, we want our last hopes. We want our radiant flames, our lava mancers. I want the fatal pushes. <clears throat> I don't think I want the stubs. The stubs is gonna hit like path. Well, they play if they play. Is it reasonable they play Elders Evolution? Uh, most of the time I don't respond, but I, I hate I hate shit like that. I hate, I literally hate it when anybody like when you complain to your opponent about luck. I hate that. I try not to do that at all. Like, if I get frustrated at an event, I just, like, sign my match up quickly and I just leave the table because I don't want to diminish my opponent there. Because my opponent, like, I sequenced and played well there. Like, I think I deserved to win that game. I got, I did scry into a card that I needed, but I didn't find a removal spell at all. Like, 
that's just that's magic. All right, I gotta think here. I don't think I want. I don't think I need all of these anglers, especially if I'm bringing in these lava mancers, and they could easily have a card like scavenging use. I'm gonna look to bring these stubborn denials back in if they play something. If I see like an eldritch evolution, I think. Um, K commands probably okay. Um, I could trim some wraiths and look to play a little bit of a longer game. I could trim like two wraiths. Now I'm gonna leave two wraiths in. I don't think I want another K command. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go like this. Hopefully we get a Lava Man on one. Dude, Grim Lava Mancer has been an MVP for me lately. All right, this is some painful stuff, but we have two removal spells and we can get nasty online pretty quickly because this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we get to, I mean, if we get to cast two dismembers, we, we, we're going to get nasty, but I need to delete that plug there. No copy. No plays on one. Um, I think I'm going to cycle on turn one here because if I hit a discard spell or a cantrip, I'm going to want to cast it. Which card was gross? Okay. If you want, like, let me just, let me, uh, the chat here. Let me just help you all out with something. This is something that, like, Jeff Hoogland does very well that is good. So I post this, this post here about this deck that I'm playing here. And the guy, this, the, like, Danello, if you're in the chat, I really dislike it when people just go, no TBR or no nothing question mark. Like, I think that it's better... For the streamer because there's so much going on and it's better for you because you think about what you're doing if you say like there i i think that you should there's no tbr question mark i think that you should be playing tbr because of this you know oh lava man's lava man's insane right now i was lo i was wrong on lava man i really dislike it when you, people are like and i think a lot of your streamers will also dislike it and I think that it's important for you to, like, when you ask a question, give something about it. All right, we're just going to get a tap land here. Um, probably just Blood Crypts. So I can just go Snap Put. Or I can go, like, Push, Bolt Push. Which... I think I'm going to do as sad as that is. I think I'm going to start with the push because I can always just go bolt. I can go bolt, snap, bolt. Let me go cancel here. I'm going to go fetch. I kind of want to fetch a basic because like the way that my hand is like lining up here, it can be very, very painful. And likely this game is going to last a little while longer. So while I eliminate myself from going like Snapcaster Mage plus Cantrip in the same turn, unless I draw another land, I think that my Snapcaster Mage is basically reserved for removal spells. So I think I'm just going to get a basic. I'm going to start with this because my Bolt can hit a Planeswalker. Well, yeah, I mean like... There, there are some things that Jeff Hoogland that does that are, like, kind of annoying. But, like, he runs a very good stream. Like, he's probably, right now, he's probably the most... Caleb gets more views, but I would not be surprised if Hoogland has more streams. Like, more view, more, um... How do I say this? More subs or something like that. Like, he, he he's, like, while he does some things that are very annoying, like, he's a very good streamer. I think we're just going to delve and play Angler and leave the Fatal Push in. 
So I could just go put this on the bottom, put this on top, cycle my street wraith, Thought sees my opponent, and then cast Gurmag Angler, leaving Fatal Push. Oh, I have Double Reflector Mage, that's gonna change. That changes things. So now I probably go Reflector Mage. Yeah, I mean, he's he's like aggressive about it and kind of trolly, but like, it is nice that he, like, the fact that he timed someone out for that is over the top, I think, but I do get it. Yeah, we can't beat Cigarda, but we have a Snapcaster Mage plus Thoughtseize to deal with that. What I'm worried about here is I can't beat these Reflector Mages. I guess I can kind of beat Reflector Mage by, like, delving, um, like being, like, spending a whole turn to delve. Why are they bringing Static Caster against us? Like, why, why is, are they worried about young Pyromancer? Okay. I think I'm going to take Reflector Mage, and then I'm going to bolt this. Next turn, go Snap, Thoughtseize on Sigarda. And hopefully they play a Reflector Mage. Or maybe if I take the Sigarda, they're going to be more likely to play a Reflector Mage next turn. Yeah, I'm just going to take the Sigarda, and then they might play into a Reflect, like just casting a Reflector Mage. Well, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like, my whole plan, I'm probably going to snap, like, my whole plan was like, I'm going to snap Thoughtseize one of these Reflector Mages anyways. But I guess if I take the Sigarda, they're more likely to run out a Reflector Mage, right? Like, it's just the order, I guess. So they're going to flash the Staticaster in. Yes, they're, they're really worried about Empire Mancer. And I'm just gonna bolt this. Like I'm not, I'm not going to take. Like this game's gonna last a while for us. Like I'm not gonna just take a bunch of damage for no reason. Sneak in, snappy under reflector mage. This bus turns it on, dude. It turns on the bounce. Birds of paradise. The bird is the word. I'm not killing this. The static caster does nothing. I'm killing this. I don't want to take the damage. This game's going to last. This game's going to last a, a little while. Okay, so now we thought he's a reflector mage, and then I can dismember this if I if like if we determine that's what like it's good to dismember this. I can snap. I can go thought sees take two, take four, go to five. My opponent's got reflector mage, reflector mage. They have reflector mage, reflector mage. They have draw stat. So I guess I should take a look at what they have first because we're casting this no matter what. And now I'm probably taking care of this and then trying to land this next turn. Or going, or taking care of this and then either going Snap Thoughtseize to take the Reflector Mage. Or if they just cast the Reflector Mage, can't play Gurmag Angler next turn. Which they might just cast the Reflector Mage. I don't know. They don't have anything going on. It would be like a very, it'd be an aggressive play from them. <clears throat> and it probably means they're not drawing anything. more coffee. I'll be right back. Okay, 
so they're just gonna they played their swamps they reflect their, their force they reflect their mage x So we're going to go to three. We don't have an Inquisition, right? There's just Thoughtseize. Next turn, play Angler. Be in all right shape. Something I don't necessarily like about these, like this, the dismember, is dismember does make it a little more difficult to play a longer game. Okay. All right. So now we're on the board. Ooh. Oh, that's so bad. That is so bad. Deals one damage to me. Oh my god. They put a card on the bottom. And pinged me. So I have a couple draws that get me out of this. But now I can't pay Phyrexian for this, which is a problem. Their last card is Hollow Fountain. Alright, we're good now. All right, they're blocking. So as long as they don't hit a flyer with power, it should be okay. All right, we're not snapping back Thoughtseize, Street Wraith, or Dismember. Yeah, Collector Brutality. I didn't play any this weekend. But, scry one, ping me. I can see the game. Nice. All right. But do you even bring in Collector Brutality against that deck? Like, I don't think I would bring Brutality in unless I saw a Eldritch Evolution, right? Because it's just two mana kill a small creature, which isn't that good, right? And like the gain life is, it's kind of, it's kind of like, I don't know, it seems kind of narrow. If I saw Eldritch Evolutions, then I'd be down. We'll grab an apple, we'll be right back. I'm just gonna mute myself while I eat here. While I eat this apple, I'll be right back.
Okay. So the reason that I took the Grave Shot there was because this hand's likely going to do quite a bit of damage to me. And, um... I'm going to hit a Thought Scour here. So the reason that I took the Grave Shot there... This hand's likely going to do quite a bit of damage to me, and I don't want them to just, like, me. value go off. And, um... Okay, Thought is a good draw. Thought Scour here. So the reason that I took the Grave Shot there... This hand's likely going to do quite a bit of damage to me, and I don't want them to just, like, me. Okay, so they have... Go off. And, um... I think I'm just taking this repeal. How, how about now, Rafi? Are we all set? <clears throat> okay. I'm going to take Repeal. And if I go Shock, it's 7. It's a 3 turn clock. Go five, seven, 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 so three turn clock. I'm not gonna fetch, I'm just gonna go to six. Because if he gives me a target here, I take four life and he's dead next turn. Okay, so you gotta be ready for like the empty the warrens plan. So I like bringing in the fourth stub and two veils. I don't like, like I don't really like my spot removal because oftentimes they board out some creatures. Um, I'll hedge against that and keep bolts in. And K command is kind of slow, I think, especially considering they take out, if they're gonna shave bears, they're gonna shave electromancers. And that's the one that K command kills. So I like just going like this. I love how lean and like just combo destroying these things are. Disdainful Stroke only hits gifts, which is, I think that's kind of narrow. And like, what else am I gonna take out though? You know? Like, I guess Stroke hits Past and Flames as well. So it hits gifts and Past and Flames. All right, we got to turn to. We got to turn to angler. We just got to hope my opponent doesn't go off here quickly. This is a hand where we can get turn two. But we can we can interact with a, um, we can interact with a bear if he plays a bear next turn. And if we just don't get um. If my opponent's a little slow, like they don't have that that really fast draw. So just come on, play a bear. Don't don't ritual me, man. Morphos, okay. They don't play the moon. Shivan Reef means no moon, right? Okay, we hit Thought Seize, which is good. So like next turn we can snap Thought Seize if we need to. So now we're gonna loot Blood Crypt. All right, those are good. So I probably just ditch this and a Snapcaster Mage. And then I'm delving, so I have one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I delve, leaving like double thought seas.
or I could just go one, like these are going for sure. And then it's like, I probably just want the looting. Yeah, just to have it there. The struggle. What do you mean they don't play search, but there you go there, Rafi. I'm confused. If I get this Liliana down, but maybe I'm just supposed to hide behind like Stubborn Denial. This is one of those where like, if I get to play my Liliana, I feel like I'm in good shape. Oh, we're going off here. Oh, he's gift saying. Okay. So now we need to hide behind Stubborn Denial. I should be able to split this gifts up decently here. Best draw next turn is a discard spell or another stub. Maybe Johnny and I will get paired. You never know. Okay, Electromancer, Baral, Pieces. I kind of want to put both spells in the graveyard. Because I can bolt one, then Snapcaster bolt the other. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to do here. Put both spells in the graveyard. I can deal with his creatures. Wow, that was so good. They're going to ask me what it's like sometime. I'm so good at this game. I literally draw exactly what I need. Get rid of this. I should. This is miss sequencing. I should attack first. <clears throat> so we're gonna take one bear probably. I can take the serum visions as his hand is kind of weak, but the I think that's kind of loose with the search out there. So I'm just gonna take a bear. Oh man, this is gone. This is gone. This is gone. This is gone. Cause yeah, I mean, I think I think harassing their cantrips with this search and play is just not gonna work. Bud. Okay, Seer Visions resolves. They play an island. There's Veral. So they have gifts, pieces. So we stub the pieces. So we know the last two cards. Stub pieces, bolt Veral. And then if we draw something that's not very good here, this might be a good time to sneak in Liliana. Yeah, I think this is, I don't think it's going to get any better for Liliana right now. And I don't think there's a draw that kills me, right? Because they have to commit four mana to a Gifts. Yeah, I think this is time for Liliana. We're going to ditch our Thought Scour. They ditch their Sleight of Hand. They ditch gifts, okay. I guess gifts is pretty clunky. They hit ritual piff, what does that do? That doesn't do anything. What do you got, my friend? Just gonna plus that, get rid of our street wraith. And then if they take any damage, we'll just snap bolt them. They did some looting. 
I wonder why this card's not played in Storm. I think this is a good Storm card. I think with how powerful the deck is, I think that, like, you, you have such specific cards that you need in order to go off. I think playing Faithless Looting is good in Storm. Because you don't necessarily need... I don't think it's a critical mass. Once you have Baral in play and, like, a Gifts, then nothing else matters. Alright, there's the Search for his Kanta. Okay. So we're probably looking for Unsub, Sanchiate. Give me Drowse, okay. So now if my opponent doesn't, okay, so now they're dead. So I just snap bolt them. The last card is Giga Drows. Bam. All right. Push post game over graveyard hate. Yeah, but like, you just don't need you just don't need like a lot to go off, right? If you have like, if you if you can resolve, I just wonder like how maybe it's bad right now because the meta game is pretty fair, but like you don't need a lot to win with that deck. You just need Baral, Gifts, and, like, one other thing, you know? Dude, does everybody want to see the cutest tweet of all time? This is a picture of Philly Boy. That I posted yesterday. It's like, don't forget your Liliana, Dad. Oh, he's the cutest dog ever. This is when he was younger, though. This isn't. This wasn't yesterday. I took this a while ago, and I was trying to find like a good time to post it. I wanted to post it like during an SCG when a Tron player beats Jun, and just be like, Tron be like. I don't, I don't think Traverse, I think Traverse Shadow is not super great because of, yeah, I just, I just can't find a way to beat humans consistently with that deck. That's the only problem. If I can find a way to beat humans on the reg, then I'd play that deck. Okay. This hand's like not super great, but we're going to keep it. It's, it's potentially a pretty explosive Death Shadow hand. This burn. It's actually, this hand's actually not bad against burn. No, it's not. It's not bad against a dumb, dopey creature deck either. So I'll probably just have to be an adult and get Street Wraith with it, or get Steam Vents, even though I loathe Steam Vents. I don't have main deck flames, right? Main deck flames. Oh, 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 you're talking about the Traverse Shadow deck. You do you, man. So, so I'm playing against the old Value Town. Alright, we're doing we're doing an excellent job at dealing ourselves damage. I kind of want this Inquisition because I want to hit a Knight. I'm playing a 2-2 Shadow is kind of mopey. I wouldn't be surprised if I had to set this game up where I killed him. Um, no, it really doesn't have to be nerfed. Like, the deck's beatable. It's just a very, it's just a good deck. I'll put this on top. I'm actually going to cycle into it, and I'm going to Thought Seize a Knight, hopefully. And then next turn, we can loot away some of this garbage. Okay. All right. Should we just take the path? If I take the path, my opponent draws a spell color. Well, the path just doesn't do it. I gotta take the path, yeah, because it, but hopefully they don't draw land here. Maybe I should have taken the queller, because it like prevents me from playing. Yeah, dude, that was so dumb. I should have taken the queller. 
Hopefully they quell this faithless living here. Yeah, I, I listen to that. I think that... Oh, we are, we're eating stuff? Oh, man, this is going to get my shadows going to get in play. This is great. Eat my street rays. Oh, man, if we hit a black source, we can get nasty. Man. So I'm definitely ditching one. I'm probably not ditching the second one. Well, it's either that or like, I have to ditch the Thought Scour, it feels like. My opponent's, I think I'm gonna ditch the Thought Scour and I can still play the Angler next turn more than likely because my opponent's gonna have to commit a lot of resources to it. And I, I want this, this, and this. I don't necessarily think I want this. Maybe this card's the discard, the Island. If I ditch this Island, then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. If my opponent eats two things, I can no longer cast Gurmag Angler, but I have a Thought Scour to help me out. My Black Source next turn is probably reserved for the Scavenging Ooze. So I think I'm just going to take Ditch the Island and the Angler and play this. Then hopefully I hit a hopefully my opponent just goes to town on my graveyard here. No, no Muse Card TV. TBR is the I think TBR is my way to win. I think I can play, I think I can maneuver this game to where Spell Queller is not gonna nab my TBR. What do you think, Philly? What do you think, bud? So they ditch Noble Hierarch. So this is four. If they eat Gurmag and Noble Hierarch. So if I take this, if I take this and I draw a land, I probably can, if I draw a black land, I probably can push this, get the Spell Queller, and then attack them. Alternative, I'm only going to four, but then I'm dead to all the attackers next turn, but then they have to flash this in if I don't. So I think I'm just going to take this. We go to four. They hold up the Spell Queller. And that is probably going to do it. We're going to hope this is just a bait. We want them to quell this. Which they do, and now they're dead. This is 2 4. Doesn't really matter. Can we get in there? Alrighty. Well, we got lucky there. I think that there's, I think that Death Shadow is, should be built a little differently than it has. I think that, I do think there's something to this Faithless Looting. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not as high on this card right now, but. So Blint, why did I take a suboptimal line there? Should have attacked and cast TBR on the shadow. Okay. Okay. Like I guess if we wanted to be super technical, that was the right that was the right thing to do. But like it didn't super matter, right? Because unless I had a reflector mage. Because I was going to go like, if they just let that resolve, I attack with my shadow, and then I cast Gurmag Angler. I don't TBR. I cast Gurmag Angler, and I've got blue up. Blue, red, and my steam vents up. But I guess, I guess like, I, I, I did shortcut slightly, I guess. So... Alright, against this deck, this deck's kind of tough because 
It's like I want creature removal, but I also want counter spells. I wonder if this deck is worth This deck probably plays some number of Reflector Mages. So I don't want any of these. I'm bringing in some cards that tax the graveyard. Um, these Radiant Flames, maybe? I don't think I want four stubs. There's, there's, there's like, there's times when Liliana is good. Each Liliana is good. But I need to cut another card. I kind of want to cut some Street Wraiths. Kind of just look to play a longer game. I'll cut one street. I don't think I want any of my planeswalkers on the on the play. Well, if I'm bringing in lava mancers, I probably can have veils because like lava mancer is protecting the Liliana the veil. I probably don't need this K command. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring in, we'll bring in the Lilianas might not be aren't very good on the draw, but hopefully, like, I'm very sure there's a Liliana plus Grim Lava Mancer draw that's very good against this deck. That's all feel, I think. I think you have to be with what you, how your sideboard's built, and how you how you feel the matchup is, and what you want your role to be there. 25-26. A matchup like this, especially on the draw, I don't think that I'm just going to like cycle, 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 battle rage him. I think that he's going to prevent some resistance, some reflector mages, some spell colors, path to exiles, voice of resurgence that I'm going to have to chew through. This ain't okay. It's not great. I would like a threat, but besides that, okay, no, no turn one play from our opponent's gas. All right, we're going to hold that looting because I, as, as of right now, I think I want most of my cards here. I'm probably going to, if I'm going to take a voice of resurgence more than likely if I get the option to. What is going on, dude? I don't even care. I'm just going to take this knight. Why are you, holy shit. Like... Like, right there, dude. We got a combo deck. Alright. So, if I thought he's again, take the knight, more than likely. And then I can bolt this or looting. I don't really want to take damage from this. So, I think I'm going to go Thoughtseize, bolt. Dude, this is a combo deck. Self, look, look at it. He's got it made. This right here. He knew that was on top. The plan's probably bored into like a bunch of selfless spirits. I'm just gonna bolt this now because I just want this thing gone. I don't want something weird to happen. So I might have to go snap Thought Seize this, this collected company. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Snap Thoughts. He's the Collected Company. I'm down to 8, then down to 6. And then I'll probably just full retail dismember that next turn. Little MSRP dismember. I think this is like, I think that's like serious role misassignment. And I think that's a really big way to lose a lot of percentages in Modern. Is like, I don't think like you. Uh, okay, I don't think that you want to be doing something like this out of this deck against a deck with Snapcaster Mage in it. Like, play something like Reflector Mage. If you're that worried about my creatures, play Reflector Mage. Don't play Wrath of God. Okay, so we're gonna hold that to looting. I think I'm just going to dismember this. Uh, at least I can guess my sideboard cards thinking. I keep, I keep, um, I keep thought teases in my deck whenever I play against a deck that has a more on average 
card for card powerful draw stat than I do. So something like John Jeskar, any of the three color good stuff decks, I keep it in against. Um, I basically keep it in a lot. Like I hardly ever cut discard. I think I'm just gonna. I don't want to get spell colored, so I think I'm just gonna take care of this, and then I'm just gonna pay all. I don't. I'm just gonna pay it all here, and then I'm just gonna attack. And then next turn, I will hopefully draw another shit card and looting away both the shit cards. I might go Serum Visions first. They're drawing a card, okay. You take two here so you can visions. I kind of want to vision the looting in the same turn, Dark Horse. Now I'm not sure what I want to do. Okay, so Drew Push. We don't need this looting. I don't think we want this either. I think we want like real spells at this point. And now I kind of just want to play my fetch land and play my death shadow and then hold because I want to be able to turn on revolt if I need to, to kill something in the air. And it makes this looting worse, but like, I think it's, I think it's my bet, my better play. Though, no, that was so stupid because I know they have Wrath of God, so I don't want to do that. That was so dumb. I just messed up. All right. No, I knew they had Wrath of God, so I wanted to do this. Yep. That was, that was just an on the board fuck up. So now we'll do this. I'll ditch both of my lands. And then I'll pass. And I'm just going to try to like make them wrath me, I guess. Make them deal with the Snapcaster Mage. Well, now I can play a Death Shadow because um, cause I have a second one, I guess. My opponent Wraths. I play another one. Okay. But now you're playing... I don't understand. So now what do I want to do here? Do I want to just push this? And just keep pecking away at them. It sucks pushing a Reflector Mage when they have a Wrath of God. The problem is that all that, like, this is now a major threat. So I think I've actually got to push this. I think I'm just going to hold here. Because, like, the Battle Rage is going to probably be good if this game goes to complete shit. Which I think is the only way that I lose this game. Like, if my opponent goes Collected Company or plays a huge Knight of the Reliquary, I'm going to want this Battle Rage. So I think we're just going to hold it here. Play conservatively. And I'm definitely going to play my Death Shadow this turn. Because if they... Well, that's... That's not bad. I still have my Island, right? No, my island's gone, so I have to take three to fetch off of this. Which I probably should have done a while ago as I used my, uh, I used my whatever it is. My, god, I can't even think. I used my Fatal Bush. Do you have any? Now I think I just go Snap Bolt. My opponent isn't representing Spell Queller. And I don't think my opponent's deck plays Lightning Bolt. It's just red for the Kessig Wolf run. <clears throat> so let me go get a second red source. Yeah. Because they're not representing like... The only thing that they're representing for interaction is like Lightning Bolt or a Counterspell. 
And even if this goes to hell in a handbasket, I still have a Death Shadow to play. This is how it's meant to be, baby. Give me the 2 1 double striker for the W. <clears throat> All right, last match of the day. Oh, yeah, we're 2 0 our last couple of opponents. Holy shnikes. Last match of the day. Um, before we do that one, I really appreciate everybody showing up and hanging out today. I've had a great stream. Please hit the follow button if you guys like what you see. It's going to help me get towards more subscriptions, more sponsorships, so that I can stream more decks. Um, you guys check out Card Hoarder as they sponsor the stream. They're the best bot chain in the business. If you guys want to support me without you know, opening up your pocketbook, then go to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put all of my, uh, I put all of my videos up there. And last, if you, want to, uh, if you want to interact with me about magic or see cute pictures of my dog, just give me a shout out on Twitter. So thank you all. We'll get in here for the last match of the day. They could ghost themselves for white. Yep. Yeah. That is real news. All right, we're gonna keep this. And I guess I lead on Faithless Looting. This is so awkward. I think I'm gonna cycle a Street Raid first. Because I don't want to go get Steam Vents, but I think this hand might warrant Steam Vents. Do I just get Blood Crypt now? Yeah, I'm just going to get Blood Crypt. And Inquisition on one. Alright. So we're nowhere close to Tron, which is gas. But we all know how this works out here. We have stub for Karn, which is good. <clears throat> we need to go, we want to go Faithless Looting into Street Wraith Fetch Land. And get this, get this Fatal Push and this Snapcaster Mage out of my hand. And also get my draw step as well, so. That's not a bad draw. Oh. Oh, I'm just gonna throw up. And now we now so much more of our deck is shut off because we relied on that fake of Sluting. Like Serum Visions is a terrible draw here. Oh, that was bad. I trusted you, Serum Visions. This is what you did to me. Relic. Field Scorer. There's Poppet, okay. That cuts off a lot of what I'm doing here, which sucks. Yeah, see, now... All right, well, at least we get to... I'm gonna start with an Inquisition. Sylvan Scrying, okay. So they have Urza's Mind, so they they got Mind Energies. Chromatic Sphere, it's a pretty good draw. Because now they get to go like, crack it, draw a card. If they hit Sylvan Scrying, they get to play Mind, then go Sylvan Scrying. Come on. That's close. Come on. All right. Now we can play magic. The question is, we go Thought Seize, Death Shadow, or Death Shadow, Hold Up, Stubborn Denial? What am I stubbing? I'm not stubbing anything because it's not turned on, so I think I'm just gonna thought seize. All right, double worm coil. I'm gonna take a worm coil because we can stub this Karn.
All right, so now we just, just got to miss. Okay, they missed. That's not, that. that's tough. Okay, hang on. So, fuck, we can only deal with him seven this turn. Damn it, I need to be at one. Because I totally, I can only deal with him seven, which puts him at 13. So I need to kill him over two attacks. All right, we're going to put the angler on top. If they were, if this was eight and it was twelve, I could kill. If I, I need one more. I need one more point in order to get him. <clears throat> if my opponent misses here, I'm gonna dismember my own. Yeah, we're gonna get that out of here. I'm gonna dismember my own death shadow here to put my opponent to one, which will make. Any of my, um, not putting my opponent to one, I gotta pay four life. I'll put them to two, which makes much, many more of my top decks. Like, I got 1k command and two bolts that, um, that'll make be lethal. And now we're just gonna wait. We're not gonna play this because if they draw land, they kill this. If they, like, they're not going to... Like, no matter what, they're killing the shadow. Oh, that does it. Oh, that does it. That's so bad. Because now they just get Tron and they blow this up. So now let's hope for some of our one-outers that we were talking about. Because once a worm coil gets down... Because what is this? This is five... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they can't Ulamog me. All right, so let's get in here and attack. I haven't looked into it, but like I, I could definitely put one together here. What is going on here? All right, we're, we should be good now. So now we need Bolt or K Command. So let's just... Snapcaster Mage, there's K Command, okay. So let's put on the bottom. Put on top. So let's hope my opponent doesn't go... Karn took down a red source. Or draw another Tron land at Ulamogmi. They actually drew it. Now they're gonna Ulamog me. Ugh. Looks like we're back here. I zoned out to tell you the truth. I was looking at I zoned out here, but like they're gonna play. Uh, yeah, I zoned cats are the spawn of Satan. I zoned out, but oh my god, what a <sighs> God, he had the top deck. He top decked exactly he top decked what he needed in both of those last three turns there. Pro hey Kevin, how you doing?
All right, so against this deck, we want all of this stuff. We're going to cut this, cut Fatal Push, cut Lightning Bolts. We want Liliana the Veils, and then we're going to cut two Snapcaster Mages. Because they bring in a lot of graveyard hate, and Snapcaster is like a little underwhelming, I think. I could go one and one because we're on the play. Go something like this. Can't catch these high anywhere else. Exactly, dude. Exactly. This is the Pro Tour. Yeah, I mean, I'm playing it. Like, I'm not super. Modern, just kind of modern, you know? Like. Like, for example, my opponent, I played somebody, I played somebody that was playing a little black-green rock deck that played, like, four mana Karn in it, you know? And I thought to myself, is it actually correct to play this deck, you know? But it's not correct to play, I don't know, I don't know. Alright, we're going to keep this hand. Or the Serum Visions is going to do us good here. Yeah. You don't like Liliana? Okay. I guess I am more a Snapcaster deck. I like it when I play Jund, but you know, we are we are different. So we're looking for black land and a threat. Snapcaster Mage. We don't want Snapcaster Mage. I'm gonna keep Thought Scour because it's just a redraw. Counters first part. Okay. This is kind of what I was worried about, though. Like they're probably gonna run four deep with these after sideboard. If I had to, if I had to guess. Like it would, I don't. Maybe maybe four is a bit of an, you know, a bit of um, an over an overstatement, but. I think I should probably take the Sylvan Scrying. Chromatic Sphere makes green mana, so I can take like the, the spheres or like whatever. I guess I should take the Sylvan Scrying. It's a card that actually matters. Yeah. Yes, modern modern is good for that. All right, we're gonna get that out of here. I would like to have saved that for that worm coil engine, but if I draw a land, I can go like bang bang, which. Might be worth it. It basically, like... Yeah, I think I'm just going to go K-Command here and here. It effectively cuts off two draw steps. Because, like, this is represents a draw step, and this represents a draw step. Because they're going to they're gonna ditch their Chromatic Sphere, I think. And it's not like I'm going to be returning anything from my Graveyard. Yeah. Like, this Colorado command is not bringing anything back. Ditch the Worm Coil. Okay. We'll take that. They wanted to just keep the draws. We're not ever getting to five mana under this thing here. An Exhibition map. Okay. All right, here we look at this PMJ results oriented, results oriented thinking. All right, this is great. This is great. We're all about results here. I'm gonna ditch this stud. 
I get what you're saying, though. Results oriented. That's all we care about here at this channel. Tron players always draw that. Yeah. So he's ditching this, and then he's playing it. What is he playing? What do you got here? It's kind of awkward how this relic can protect. So I could go Liliana, Liliana. I'm going to see what my opponent does with this relic. Exactly. If my opponent pops this relic, I might... I guess I'm not going to do that then. Well, now, now I'm going to discard it. If my opponent popped the relic, I might have discarded Stub, and then Ancient Stones. Okay, so let's. I think I do this. He has to pop now. I got you. It's all results. This is all we care about. At this channel, we only care about results-oriented thinking. I don't give a shit about your logic. All right, that's great. We're going to be able to cast the shit out of that someday. All right, well, hopefully my opponent just doesn't do what... Hopefully my opponent just slams a Karn. Just goes, no land, slam Karn. And I just get to stub it. That was a good play from my opponent, by the way. Four mana. Oh, shit. They slammed a Karn. They're probably laughing at me now. They did slam a Karn. Oh, I love magic. I love magic. I'm going to lose this in just the most like entertaining of way here. Yep. Logic is dead. Long live results. Why don't you crack it? I guess that means they... Well, no. They, they can just play the land, right? I guess they want this thing to be a 2-2. little baby Karn. All right, nice. So I have to ditch a Death Shadow, unfortunately. Cycle this. I could just go like Thought Seize, play Death Shadow, tick up. And hope my opponent hits two bricks off of their Karn. I think that's the plan. Oh no, that was stupid. That was so stupid! That was so stupid. Like, I literally am sitting there and I have, like, I thought I was gonna get Hellbent. Fucking A. Alright. I'm playing so poorly today. Like, ugh. Ugh. All right, dude, you can have a. I'm gonna give him. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna hope he didn't hit anything here. No, I should like fuck. Not fuck Tron. I should have my head out of my ass. I'm just playing like a complete dipshit today. I think I'm gonna give them the tower, because the forest doesn't matter. Like, my opponent could have hit, like, the four, like, if after I Liliana them, I should be able to make a split where the tower is relevant. Because I think now I've got to ult this. Like, I'm just going to trade, ult this, and then try to figure it out. And I should, I can, I don't want to split them, I don't want to give them green mana, because they could have drawn Ancient Starrings. This tower is only relevant if they drew Ulamog or Ugin, which is, like, two cards in their deck. The forest... But it gives them Ugin or four Ancient Stirrings, which could be important. Or it gives them a Sylvan Scrying, which can help them rebuild post Liliana. So I'm just going to give them the Urza's Tower. Here. Motherfucker. <sighs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. 
Oh my god. All right. All right. Oh, was that the right play to do? Right? I mean, what was that right? Like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself that I played like a complete dipshit throughout this stream. I'm gonna stop my YouTube video here.